Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome once again to another episode of the Savior's Cross broadcast where our intent here is to uh, learn uh, together and lift up our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross, Jesus Christ and Him crucified, uh, to learn more and more about uh, Him and what He accomplished uh, on Calvary, which is everything to, to all of us that, that love Him and know Him. Welcome again to the broadcast. It's good to uh, have Brother Daryl Purser uh, on my right. It's good to see Brother David McCall back on yep. uh, the broadcast. Um, and uh, I want to uh, say a little prayer. Let's say a little prayer. I remember uh, Brother Jamie Ellis. We miss him. Yes. Uh, he's not with us tonight. Don't. Uh, but uh, God knows, and uh, we're just praying that, that uh, he's doing well and uh, may just be tired. So sometimes sometimes those things happen, but we certainly miss, um, and not only miss, but we value uh, yeah. Brother Ellis, his input and his insight uh, on the things of God. So help me pray and uh, continue to pray for this broadcast. Uh, we're going to... With the help of the Lord, we're going into a subject, a different uh, line of subject matter tonight. Uh, we're going to look uh, or take a biblical look. And I want to, uh, before, I, before I release the subject, and some of you have already seen it on the screen, I want to, uh, to lay the foundation that anything that, uh, we at this desk uh, attempt to discuss um, we are doing our best to stay within the confines of the scriptures Absolutely. because the scripture is the authority and um, I want to uh, say that that um, the scripture in the day and time that we live in um, it's not the scripture's fault and it's not uh, God's fault but the scripture uh, it seems to be losing uh, its authority within the eyes of society. And anytime you broach a subject that has to do with eternity, anytime we broach a subject or approach a subject, uh, we must understand that the scripture is the final authority. Amen. And uh, we, um, we're going to... Uh, look at the subject uh, of Satan tonight, Satan, uh, or the doctrine of Satan. Uh, we're going to look at uh, his person, uh, which will probably lead us into some other su subjects such as spiritual warfare. Is there such thing as spiritual warfare? Is there such thing as Satan? Um, we, we have all kind of opinions. We have all kind of data. Uh, but again, coming back to the Word of God, I want to remind you uh, that I, I believe that this broadcast will eventually find its way uh, into the uh, device of maybe an unbeliever just simply because of the title. Um, I want to remind, remind that person uh, that may be an unbeliever that the reason, the reason that I base what I believe uh, on the scripture is because it's the word of God. And I want to remind us all uh, that there was over 40 authors um, that was involved with this scripture, the, what the scripture meaning the Bible, the Word of God, 40 authors over some odd uh, 1,600 years right. that these words were written. Uh, and these authors, all of these 40 authors, many of them never conversed. Uh, many of them lived, lived hundreds and hundreds uh, of miles apart. Um, so I, I just want to throw that out there for you. Um, God's Word has been around a long time. And uh, I want to let you in on this. God's Word's not going anywhere. That's right. uh, a man has tried to stamp it out. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, as we'll, we'll probably touch on this a little bit, Satan has tried to uh, do his best to to throw it in the ditch and cause doubt even from the Garden of Eden. Uh, but we just want to, um, we want to expose this enemy 
Uh, we talked about it before the broadcast. We are not exalting Satan in no way, shape, or, or fashion. We are not uh, trying to, to buttress him. Uh, we know that he's powerful. We understand that he's powerful, but we also know that God is all-powerful. Yes, and uh, last but not least, least um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dealt with this enemy uh, on the cross of Christ. Yes, so he did. thank God for that. <laughs> thank God for that. We're going to open, uh, gentlemen, uh, our opening scripture. And, and just for, uh, to give credit, we are in... Uh, Brother Swaggart's How Can I Understand the Bible, uh, uh, The Doctrine of Satan. We're tr using it sort of as our outline, as our study guide, and we want to give uh, Brother Swaggart credit for this, uh, and, and we're going to, to use it, and, and, but we're also going to uh, have, have our own input and uh, have our own insight from it, from uh, what, what the Lord would have us to say, so... Let's get started. Let me, let me read this uh, verse, gentlemen. Uh, and uh, Brother David, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to start the, the first question and maybe read down uh, through uh, the first page and at the end until the subject matter changes. Uh, who is Satan will be our first one. I'm going to ask you to read that for us if you, if you will. Okay. But the Bible says this. Uh, concerning uh, Satan uh, and also pointing this to the believer. Uh, the Bible says, Be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. That's, that's a pretty bold statement that the Word of God uh, and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit uh, has given us in His Word, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. This is, this is in God's Word, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. And before Brother David uh, begins to read this, and we're going to ask the first question, who is Satan? Uh, uh, Mr. Wiest, a Greek scholar, uh, wrote this out in the Greek, and it could be said another way. It says, your adversary, Mr. Wiest, said this in the Greek, taking the original text and changing it back into the Greek to read it that way. It says, your adversary, who is a slanderer, namely the devil, as a lion roaring in fierce hunger, is constantly walking about, always seeking someone to be devouring. And I thought that was an amazing look at, wow. the, at this one verse. And mm -hmm. again, it, again, guys, it's not that we're, that we're lifting him up in any way. But uh, the Word of God, the Word of God tells us um, in uh, 2 Corinthians that He does not want us to be ignorant right. uh, of His devices. So, I just, uh, just had that scripture pulled up here, 2 Corinthians 2.11. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, we're going to start and see uh, if we can uh, look at this question. I'm going to ask Brother David to read uh, Brother Swaggart's notes. The first question is, who is Satan. And Brother Swaggart writes, the Bible presents Satan as a personal being. He is an angel created by God, perhaps as the most wise and most beautiful of all the angels. The evidence is he served the Lord in righteousness and holiness. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Yes. Righteousness and holiness for an undetermined period of time. He was named Lucifer, which meant means light bearer or son of the morning. He carries a number of names in the Old Testament and the New Testament. These include the devil, the serpent, the accuser of the brethren, and the prince of the power of the air. The Hebrew word is Satan, which means adversary. The Greek carries the same meaning. The common name of Satan in the New Testament is diabolos, which means the devil. 
meaning one who slanders or accuses. All of this means that Satan is not merely a principle or a figure of speech, but actually a personal being who heads up his kingdom of darkness. His pride and warped desire to take God's place in the universe introduced sin. His initial rebellion, whenever that occurred, included the defection of many angels, possibly as many as one-third, as revealed in Revelation 12, 4. Although the Bible clearly pronounces his doom, he is so deceived that he believes that he will ultimately be the God of heaven and the God of this world and actually the entirety of the universe. In fact, his greatest effort of usurping God is yet ahead. It will be the time when he will invest in a man, the Antichrist, greater power than previously invested in anyone. Now, some may ask the question as to how he thinks that, is, that as a created being, he can win out over the creator. Well, that aim is preposterous to believers. It is not, all, it's not at all preposterous to him. As stated, he is so deceived, even as are his billions of followers, that he actually thinks he will succeed. Wow. He is the cause of all evil, all war, all pain, all suffering, all heartache, all destruction in the world today, and in fact, ever has been. Sin is the means by which all of this is brought about. In fact, as far as we know, Satan is the originator of sin. Gentlemen, what, what, what would be your comments? Uh, I noticed that uh, we see here in, in Brother Swaggart's notes uh, about midway, the Hebrew word uh, Satan, which means adversary. Um, I, I, I've done a little bit of research, and the word Satan uh, is mentioned about 49 times uh, in the King James Bible, and uh, it carries the meaning in the Greek of adversary. Um, you know, just, uh, I guess, for the sake of conversation, uh, is, it, is it odd that God, uh, that, that this, this person, uh, this Satan, uh, would be coined as our adversary, especially to the believer? Yes, he is the adversary, but we have to, might be getting a little ahead of myself here, but... <clears throat> We have to remember at 2 Corinthians 2.11, he's a counterfeit. He was once, as David read out of the book here, he was a, a holy and righteous Lucifer, light bearer, mm -hmm. son of the morning. Yes. And I, when I was studying for this, I got to thinking about Jesus. Jesus is called the bright morning star. Right. The star comes up before the sun does. <laughs> so I wanted to clear that up. <laughs> like yeah. that. But he he can deceive. I mean, there is you could see miracles, but you better use first John chapter four and test that spirit. Mm -hmm. Because there is a such thing as we uh, I say it in the words you can understand it, black magic. I mean, he is able to do things like that. In fact, in Revelations, he'll be able to cause wood to speak, as it's put. Uh, he'll be wounded. The Antichrist, the one he invests this power <coughs> into, mm -hmm. will be wounded. In the, wounded. And in an hour, he'll recover. He's, he's going to be a counterfeit. <coughs> That's why he's deceiving so many now. Right. I mean... I wish we had more time where I could get into this. Well, we'll get to but it. But just, just to agree with what you said with the opening statement, where it says, be sober, be vigilant. This has the idea of uh, when you go to work on a car, uh, a lot more, you roll up your sleeves. You're getting serious about it. Is, is the idea that, that being sober, it don't necessarily mean free from... Uh, liquor or beer or alcohol, of course it has that meaning also, but it, it more or less presents rolling up your sleeves, getting serious. Yes. Need to get, be serious, vigilant. Always need to be into the Word of God, 
Be not ignorant of his devices. The word vigilant, Brother Darrell, actually means to be awake yeah, or yeah. to be aware. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that the scripture, uh, as, as we pointed out in the scripture, that he's always seeking whom he may divide, who he may, as the Greek said, uh, may, that he may be devouring. He's mm -hmm. always, um, and we see here that uh, even in the, the word devil, and the word Satan, um, Satan in the New Testament, Brother David r read it, uh, is diabolos, which is where we get our English word diabolical. That's right. And uh, we can see, we can see right up front, right up front, that Satan, in God, God's word, in his description, Satan and the devil, especially being as an adversary, uh, is in direct, direct opposition to God. Yes, he is. <laughs> I think we all, I don't, whether you're a believer or not a believer, I think everybody can agree that evil exists. I, I believe everybody can agree mm -hmm. with that. Well, God didn't create evil. It came from somewhere, and it came from Satan. That's right. It was his beginning. And what was the beginning thing? What was the beginning sin or, or what was the beginning thought or the beginning action that we're talking about adversary. I'm getting there. The beginning thought, the beginning action was pride. That's it. And pride, in my opinion, and I believe scripturally uh, supported, pride is the core, core sin of all other sins. You're right. That's right. Um, and he... He hasn't changed. Satan hasn't changed. And you could say, well, I don't believe in the devil. Well, that's pride. Because you think you know better than what the Word of God knows. What the eternal Word of God speaks and has spoken and has been written like you spoke of for countless years. You know, that made me think, uh, guys, you talking about pride. And pride, the devil in his pride exalted himself uh, or wanted to exalt himself and which he did in his own mind above God you know I'm thinking it made me think about an atheist uh, a, a person that does not believe in the scripture a person that does not believe or they say they don't they say they don't believe in, in God or yeah, anything like that. That is <laughs> pride within itself. Because, and see what that does, that actually proves that there is a God. It actually proves that, that there is a deceiver. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe the, uh, the, uh, we, we, we call Satan a deceiver, uh, a slanderer, uh, an accuser. So, um, I just want to throw that out to our, uh, our friends that may run across this video uh, at some point in time that you, um, you and w the re reason I bring this out is that um, when we put this video on uh, YouTube, especially with this title, uh, we understand that we're going to have some, some comments, uh, but I, I want to, I, it, you just hit it brother david this pride this pride Absolutely. thing and that pride is the launching pad of all sin it is. and that's that's where it comes from and we can see uh we can see uh where this originated let's go ahead unless you have anything daryl just, we'll, just pride what comes to mind as we see here it deals with self right always and we inherited that when Adam and Eve, our original parents in the garden, we all born with it. Yeah. And we need to learn to purge it. Or we have to let God purge it. We can't not do it on our own. Because as you said that time you preached, don't yeah. swallow your pride. Spit That's it right, out. spit it That's out. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, thank you for bringing That's that stunning. up. That's stunning, brother. <clears throat> but we're all born with it. Jesus even said, deny thyself. And that's what pride is about self. That is. So deny yourself, not swallow your pride, but speak.
spit it out, get it out of him. Ask the Lord, we have not called, we ask not. Lord, admit it, I'm prideful. Purge this pride out of me. Yeah. Show me how. I'm weak, I can't do it. I need you to help. You know, um, and I know we need, I want us to get into Ezekiel chapter number 28, mm -hmm. and that's where this is, this is gonna start. The word of God is start, gonna start manifesting itself. But you know, uh, being Satan, the, the originator or the first one to, to, uh, to raise his spirit up in pride against God, you know, pride, too, uh, is where uh, salvation by works, uh, it manifests mm -hmm. itself. It sure I mean, I know we're not on that subject, and I, I know that, but, but w once you start seeing um, uh, this, this perpetrator of pride in humanity, mm -hmm. um, even in the Garden of Eden, it took pride for him to say to Eve, yea, did God say? I mean, that took pride. Yeah. Man, I mean, that took, that took some more nerve for him to, ra to, ra to, to raise himself up and even question God. And, and, and so we can see there. But let's, uh, let's look at um, Ezekiel chapter number 28, starting at verse number 12. And we're going to be using uh, Brother Swaggart's uh, notes um, and and uh, brother David, if you want to read the scripture, uh, and I'll I'll read the notes. Okay, Ezekiel twenty-eight verse twelve, son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord God, You seal up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. As is obvious, these are brother Swaggart's notes. As is obvious, even though the king of Tyrus is used as a symbol, the statements made could not refer to any mere mortal. In fact, they refer to Satan. The phrase, you seal up the sum, means that Lucifer, when originally created by God, was the perfection of wisdom and beauty. In fact, the phrase intimates that Lucifer was the wisest and most beautiful angel created by God and served the Lord in holiness and righteousness for a given period of time. Perfect in beauty means that he was the most beautiful of God's angelic creation. The Holy Spirit even labeled his beauty as perfect. You have been in Eden in the garden of God Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of your tablets and of your pipes was prepared in you in the day that you were created. And Brother Swaggart's notes says that you have been in Eden. The Garden of God does not actually refer to the Eden of Genesis chapter 3, but rather to the Eden which existed on this planet before Adam and Eve, which evidently was ruled by Lucifer before his rebellion. Let's move on. And uh, or, uh, Is there any comments before we move on? Because I want to talk about music here for just a second. Um, is there any comments concerning um, you seal up the psalm and speaking of his wisdom and his beauty? The only point I wanted to make uh, is, you know, we always, you, you said this before we started, you always think of Lucifer and his beauty and he was perfect. And, and like I had mentioned, he, he led the worship, as we'll learn later, he led the other angel, angelic hosts into worship. But you don't give a whole lot of thought to the fact that he had perfection and wisdom as well. Right, and, right. Um, I, that's a great point you brought out. Well, it's, you know, and again, we're, we're, we cannot read m further than what the Word of God says. Uh, but this, this may be the, the, a good time, and it may, may not be a good time, gentlemen, but we, we all um, have the question, and, and, and we have to go by the word of God is, and we, you know, it's natural for anybody to say, well, um, if God knew, if God knew this was going to happen, if God knew 
And he did. He, he did. did because God knows all he things. Sure if God knew Satan was going to rebel, then why did he create Satan? And I, I was reading in uh, a book by uh, the Reverend Clarence Larkin, a book called uh, The Spirit World. It's a very, very good book. I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, he made the statement uh, in kind of a condensed form, speaking of Satan's pride, uh, that God did not create Satan. Satan created himself. That's right. Satan uh, entered into the creation as Lucifer, the son of the morning. Uh, he entered in as this beautiful, and we're going to see this in just a moment. He entered in as this beautiful. The Bible even says that he was anointed, uh, an anointed cherub. Uh, but God never, never uh, imposes himself on the free will. Uh, of his angels, uh, be they created or human beings. He'll never, he will never force you. As a matter of fact, he won't force you to believe in the enemy called Satan. He, sure he, won't. Won't, force you to, he won't force you to believe him. That is, that is the free will uh, that our God gives. God, neither will God force you and I to believe in him. He won't force us to believe in the finished work of his precious son. But whether we believe it or not, we all, as, as David said a moment ago, we all have to agree there's something bad wrong in this world. Mm -hmm. There's something bad wrong, Brother Darrell. And, yes, and for somebody to say that there's no evil, um, there's no such thing as, as, as the Satan and, and, and to, to try to push all of that aside, uh, there, if that be the case, there's something bad wrong. But I believe we're going to stay with God's word, and uh, we're going to accept what what God says. Absolutely. Yeah. Just Amen. I mean, just right here with these, we're fixing to go into all these stones, precious gold, and everything. Think about it. In the world today, it's about money and power. That's why James addresses it in chapter 5 of the book of James. Why do we have wars? Why do we have... I mean, he addresses this about the adversary. Right there. Yeah. It's right there. Yeah, I mean, that's where... And I'm going to go ahead and say this. When he, Jesus was tempted by him in the desert and he was showed the kingdoms, it says he showed them to him in a moment. He said, I'll give you all this that's been handed to me. Notice Jesus did not argue with them because Jesus knows. He knows where he comes from. He knows the beginning and the end. I mean, he is Alpha and Omega. That's right. So what did he tell him? Worship the Lord your God and only him you shall worship. Right. I mean, that's enough right there to tell you he is, he'll offer you everything in the world now. That's right. But if we wait upon the Lord, which means, literally means long for the word, world, the Lord, like David said, as a deer, that was my verse this morning, my devotional come up. Long as a, as a deer pants for water, to long for God. That don't mean a passive, just. It sure don't. No, yeah. that's no. exactly right. I mean, it means, that's where we get the term waiter, is in server, serving the Lord while we're waiting. For what we asked for, and the, and I said it before we started. We give the devil way too much credit. Mm -hmm. It has the idea of slander. Bible says, "Examine yourself." Have you ever slandered anybody? Oh yes, sure. Yes. That's their sinful nature. We all inherited it. So when you slander somebody, and you think about, it, well, I'm doing the work of the devil. Lord, help me with this. Yeah. I have a problem. One of the you things know. that we could throw out there, um, <coughs> uh, Brother Darrell, as I was thinking while you were speaking about that, um, in this, our broadcast, we we've, we've spoke about the sin nature. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we, we, we know that the Bible speaks of the sin nature um, 
uh, especially in Romans chapter number 6. The Bible speaks of, of being in Adam. It speaks of the Adamic nature, uh, that being the nature that we inherited uh, from our fallen uh, mother and father, mm -hmm. uh, Adam and Eve. But really, when you look at it, if you want, if you want, if you, if a person could s describe, and this is pretty strong, but if a person could describe the sin nature, really the sin nature could be better described as the satanic nature. And and but we inherited. Now don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Everything that we have trouble with. Everything that we have trouble with in our society is the very same thing that Satan embraced. It's yeah, the very, yeah. it's the very thing yeah, that absolutely. the thing that he yeah. brought to himself and he wanted. He, you know, and, and it like you said, it's me, 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 me. Mm -hmm. Satan was the fir very first one to 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 really to state in his actions, it's all about me. It's all about me now. You say, okay, Brother Jeff, you're saying we have the satanic nature. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying uh, that there is, a, there is a starting place uh, for all the trouble, all the trouble that's going on. And uh, we, we had a choice. We had a choice um, in the garden to go on with God. We, everybody had a choice to go on with God. But our father, our father Adam, he chose. He chose to, to take the fruit. He chose to, to think about me. He, th he chose to take it. And with that, by, and with that death entered. By the, by the sin of one man, death entered. So um, all of this, all of this is, is, is all tied in. Um, even the trouble that we're dealing with, you know, all of that comes back to this original fall uh, that that happened to us. So, anyway, anyway, uh, music. Uh, let me read these these notes here. Uh, every precious stone, and it's referring back. Uh, isn't this something, guys? I was reading this. Um, every precious stone was mm -hmm. your covering. Uh, it presents itself as a very similar uh, to the dress of the high priest of Israel. Mm -hmm. I guess he was talking about the, the, the sardis and the topaz mm -hmm. and the diamond and the barrel and so on and so forth. And it goes on to say, The workmanship of your tabrets and your pipes uh, has to do with music. There is every indication that Lucifer's leadership had something to do with the worship of God. As well, he is called Old Lucifer, Son of the Morning, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, let's, let's talk just a moment, uh, you know, uh, about music. Uh, music, everyone, believer or not, music, it seems to be that it's, it, it, it is very, very easy to take music and to ignite passion and to ignite uh, feelings, uh, feelings of joy, feelings of, of, um, uh, uh, of sadness, feelings, uh, and I'm, <coughs> I'm speaking of, of worldly music. I just wanted to throw out there, guys, and you, you tell me what, what your... Um, what your two, two cents worth is, um, we know that the psalmist David uh, and, and other writers, uh, there was a hundred, there's 150 songs uh, in God's word, God's song book. Uh, and God loves music. God loves uh, songs. As a matter of fact, uh, it was um, through uh, uh, David uh, when Saul uh, was dealing with the, uh, those evil spirits, uh, Saul of the Old Testament, David uh, would come in and play his harp, harp and sing. Uh, no doubt he began singing the worship and praises of God, and, and, and Saul would get relief from the evil spirits. Um, so the point 
being is that if God Almighty can anoint music, which he does, especially in the Psalms, we know that they're anointed. My question is, is it reasonable to believe that Satan also can take music and anoint oh, yeah. it? Uh, in the things of this world, and I guess, I guess, I would speak more toward our youth now. Mm. It seems that um, it seems now that our music uh, that our young people are listening to, uh, and I'm not here trying to to bash music or trying to be a a legalistic uh, preacher or anything like that. But I, I think I think our parents and our grandparents should know. <coughs> Uh, that uh, God anoints music uh, for the uplifting of himself. What makes us think as the copycat that you spoke of would not anoint music to exalt himself. Well, that's just it. There, every, every production of music has a spirit behind it. There's a spirit behind every piece of music you listen to. And there's only really two types of spirits. It's either an anointed spirit of God or it's an anointed spirit of Satan, anointed by Satan himself. Yes. Um, God inspires people to write songs and produce music and all these gifts, whether they're whether they were given just just like with Lucifer, all those right. gifts he has was given by God. That's right. And he's exploited them. Well, what makes you think he wouldn't exploit the gifts that were given to man? Yeah. And so the gifts that p- these people use, this is what's really, this is what really twists things right here is the the songs and the the work of the enemy in music for his his use, the gifts that produce it. Were given by God. Yeah, you you said a real interesting, uh, give a real interesting phrase. Satan exploits or exploits exploited and exploits the gifts. Yes. Now the gifts that God give him, he's corrupted. Absolutely. So those gifts, that wisdom, that beauty, uh, it's talking about here these uh, uh, the pipes uh, and. Uh, what else did it say? It was speaking of of uh, the, uh, the 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 tabrets and pipes. <coughs> In other yes. words, that that mm-hmm. indicates um, uh, music, and anything anything that Satan lays his hand on right now, anything and everything Satan lays his hand on is corrupt, Absolutely. and it, it's going to be anti God. It's going to be. It is, it is used to excite uh, passion that will ultimately uh, lead to sin against God. Uh, you say, how you know? Because I've listened to it. I, there's a lot of that stuff I, that I used to listen to, uh, and I know what it'll do. And uh, again, I'm not trying to have a, a, a Savior's Cross broadcast on music, but I'll say this, and I'll let Brother Darrell, one of you, take it if you have a thought grandparents and parents and guardians there's there's uh, music out there now that um, Satan has designed that um, I'll just speak for myself there's music out there now that I can't understand in other words, I can't understand what they're saying. Now, if I, slow, if I slowed it way down, way, way down, and listened to it, I could understand it. But your children, my children, and your grandchildren, they understand it. Sure do. And what I'm trying to say is, is that your child or your grandchild may be on an iPhone, and, you, and you're hearing a beat. You're hearing a beat, but yet you do not hear or comprehend the words. You may want to take a very, very close look at what your children are listening to. 
and, and what your grandchildren are listening to because now not all music but a, a lot of music now is so sexually explicit music now is anti-police it is um, anti-government uh, it is uh, anti-parent mm. uh, it is anti uh, uh, anti-following the rules um, uh, and really really if you look at it in a sense it really really encapsulate encapsulates who Satan is and um, you wrap it up with the words anti-cross. That's it. That's it. It's anti-Christ. And again, I'm not. You know, I know somebody say, "Oh, here, you know, them guys are saying you, you know, don't listen to music. I can't play my radio no more." No, I'm just. I'm not saying.